Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Now, I thought I'd do a quick video just to cover the actual facts of the situation with the new Fat Shark Dominator Stroke Walk Snail Digital FPV Goggles, VTX and System. Whilst I've made a number of videos on this, a lot of them have been information and opinion. Whereas today, I just thought I'd try and put together a quick short video to cover the facts as they are today, just to try and make sure you guys know what the current situation is. Now, the reality is not a lot has changed since I put out those original videos, but I'm going to try and keep this as condensed as I can for those who haven't been able to actually see all of the information, and hopefully you'll get it all in one place. Now, just to be clear up front, if you find this video interesting, please do consider hitting the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description as well. It's only by you guys using them am I able to keep making and independent content and hopefully share with you information like this in the future. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what the facts of the situation is. To quickly summarize the situation, Fat Shark announced a new set of goggles called the Dominators, which are designed in partnership with a company we now know as Walksnail. Walksnail are a new entrant to FPV, but appear to either be part of Cadex FPV or were part of them in the past. These new goggles, called the Dominators, are going to work with a new digital FPV system known as the Avatar HD, made by Walksnail, and in this agreement stroke deal, it seems that Fat Shark have designed the goggles in partnership with Walksnail, but Walksnail are handling the VTX and the system side of things. Talking about the digital FPV system first of all, called the Avatar HD. This system looks a lot like DJI, but Walksnail have made it clear that it is not using DJI's chipset or any of their code, which leads us to believe then it must be a new system. Its features are that it supports 1080p based on H.265 codec, but it also supports up to 120 frames a second in 720p as well. It has a range of approximately 4 kilometers according to Walksnail. However, that is not limited and that will be dependent on local conditions and RF output of the units. Like DJI, the system is variable latency based on a duplex link and it has latency as low as 22 milliseconds and that latency is variable based on the information that we've seen in the goggles, but it does appear to look a bit different to DJI the way it changes in 10 millisecond steps. Another big change on this system is that it now supports either canvas mode or MSP DisplayPort. We're not exactly sure which of the two it is because they are actually different systems, but it does support Betaflight OSD via that MSP display connection, which means we're going to have full OSD just like we've seen on HD0 and not have that limited OSD like we have on DJI. Whilst the system may look a lot like DJI, there are some things that it doesn't have, such as the DJI focus mode. Moving over to the goggles, now these are the Fat Shark Dominators. Now this is an all new digital FPV goggle which has 1080p OLED displays supporting either 90 or 100 hertz depending on what spec we look at. They are, as I've mentioned, high end OLED displays which would imply that they are 16 by 9 as well based on the specification. They have a 46 degree field of view, they have IPD adjustment of 50 to 70 mil, and they have a focus adjustment of plus two to minus six. They support two to five S voltage range, they have HDMI out via USB-C, they have a HD DVR built in, and they also have canvas mode MSP display port OSD via this new HD system as well. The goggles also have a power button, which is unusual for Fat Shark, and they will work with this new Avatar HD FPV system. Something to note on these new goggles, though, is that there is no analog AV input. They are digital only, so they will only be for this new Avatar HD system. Something else on these goggles is whilst they are being initially sold under the Fat Shark Dominator brand, they will also be available a little later under the Avatar brand from Walksnail. They are, as I understand it, the same goggle, and whilst Fat Shark have the initial ability to sell it to the market, they will come directly from Walksnail a little bit later. We believe it is the same goggle, and the information that I've been given from dealers is that we will see it shipped from Fat Shark first, and then Walksnail later. However, there's been no official timeline given on that. 
Moving over to the VTX, this is a new single board design that weighs 16 grams with the camera and has a 25.5 by 25.5 mounting pattern. The ear unit has eight gigs of built-in storage, allowing you to record local DVR footage, but we don't know at what frame rate or resolution yet. It also has a power output of 700 milliwatts, but it's been said by Walksnail that it can increase to up to 1200 milliwatts via a hack, but we don't know what sort of hack that is either. It supports an input voltage range of 5.5 to 26 volt, which should suit most people. And it has a very similar stroke, identical MIPI connector to that of the DJI digital FPV system as well. Camera wise, we don't know what the situation is with regards to supporting DJI cameras. Walksnail have simply showed two cameras which look a lot like the Cadex Micro as well as the Cadex Nebula Pro. However, there's no information on if the original DJI cameras are going to be compatible or it's simply a recased camera looking similar to what we've had before. Now, there are a boatload of questions that people have about this system, and the biggest being, is it compatible with DJI? Can I use these goggles with the Vista? Or can I use these new ear units with my DJI FPV goggles? The answer to that is no. This system may look and feel like DJI, but again, Walksnail have stated that it is not DJI's code or their silicon. That means it is not DJI, and whilst it's been made to look and feel a lot like DJI with many of the same features and behavior, it is not DJI and it is its own standalone FPV system. Walksnail have also released a picture of an early VTX, which appears to show it being based off an FPGA. This is sort of expected, especially if they were doing their own design. First of all, prototyping and testing based on an FPGA, and then possibly later moving more towards off-the-shelf silicon or maybe a new custom ASIC. Obviously, there are lots of other questions around things like the range. I'm going to have to wait and see how this system performs in the real world when it is available. We know Fatshark have stated availability was about six weeks from showing it at the demo, and that is about four weeks from now. And hopefully, if that happens, we will have a lot more info then. Right now, we don't really know much more than this, and we don't know how well this system's going to perform, because what we've seen so far was extremely alpha, to say the least. What is good, though, is just how active Walksnail have been on asking questions on their group. For instance, they've already spoke about the possibility of a 1S VTX, and they've even asked the question of if people think a VRX module is a good idea for other goggles. If they deliver on what they've shown, it will be great to have a third digital FPV system in the mix that takes DJI's kind of behavior, but pushes that forward with the likes of 1080p and having proper OSD support. It should not be too long now before we find out for sure, and I will be covering that when it arrives and when it releases in the future. If you found this video interesting, please do consider giving it a like, and if you're not a subscriber, please hit that button. If you'd like to support us to continue to make content like this in the future, please do check out the links to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep making content without your support. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.